Again, with the heritage, various calls for stronger, stronger national identity and belonging, for more connections. And I'm borrowing here from the uh, official side of uh, uh, Canadian multiculturalism, that is, State Secretariat or something like that. <coughs> it's very recent. So, uh, common connections and integration even for harmonious interactions and quote, intercultural dialogue between individuals and groups. In other words, calls to counter perceived centrifugal tendencies for reinforcing the center by making sure that every component of the Canadian mosaic is part of the whole. In short, by promoting the development of the common culture. And here, one recognizes not only the duality paradigm, but the familiar language of Quebec and Turkish Finally, if you add to the foreground the sense of the Canadian sense of being threatened by the ever expanding American culture, then you get even closer to Quebec. I'm not making any judgment about the strength of those trends, and I will certainly not venture into speculating about their future. But again, interestingly, some things are definitely moving toward duality and interculturalism in English Canada. And I think it's worth paying attention. And that explains that in the last couple of years, I've been invited many times to speak for uh, English Canadian audiences in the West and Toronto and so forth, I will explain my view of interculturalism. And frankly, I will tell you that the overall response of the room is something like, well, we could use a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. That sums up the, the, the reaction of the audiences. So, uh, that being said, uh, it comes as no surprise that multiculturalism and interculturalism events uh, some basic similarities insofar as both models endorse pluralism as an underpinning philosophy. Now, Canada as a whole is a much more complicated nation than most people believe. Actually, Canadian diversity management system is uh, highly complex. As I said, Canada no doubt embraces the diversity of the time. But if you consider the two official language policy and the status of native people, then you're getting close to the multipolarity framework. And likewise, the recognition of Quebec as a nation by the Harper government in 2006 speaks of B or, or multipolarity. <coughs> and if you regard Francophone Quebec as a cultural minority within Canada, then you have something close to the duality paradigm again. Finally, if you take into account the dynamics that unfolds at the provincial level, for instance in New Brunswick or in Ontario, you will find evidence of a majority-minority relationship, which makes the overall picture even more <coughs> complex. I would say that there are huge blind spots in what we call Canadian multiculturalism. And there is much more pragmatism in this system than internal consistency. And this remark is not meant as a criticism, since to various extent, all diversity management systems are fraught with their share of contradictions. You may remember that when Henrika defines Canadian multiculturalism as a sort of mixed bag <coughs> by referring to a three silo configuration. <coughs> this is the real idea. Three silos, that is, the relationships with ethnic groups and immigrants, with national minorities, what he calls substate national groups, and <coughs> relationships with the First Nations. Will also stresses the fact that those three subsets are informed by different philosophies and policies and have different origins in the Canadian past. What is really amazing is that 
in the 1971 motion that has introduced <coughs> particular dualism, <coughs> Prime Minister Trudeau was precisely cautioning Canadians against that sort of three-part vision of their country. It's absolutely amazing to read the motion in light of this definition. So in this regard, the three silo vision of Canadian multiculturalism clearly contradicts the founding statement of the model. To sum up, there is an interesting ambivalence about Canadian multiculturalism. According to a first wide-ranging vision, it includes the three silos. But actually, multiculturalism, the way it is usually understood, applies only to one of them the relationship between individuals and ethnic groups. But if you endorse this second restricted meaning, then you can't any longer identify Canada as a whole with multiculturalism. So it, is, it applies only to one, only one component of the country. My conclusion about Canadian multiculturalism is threefold. <clears throat> if one refers to the common meaning of the model, it is clearly different from, but getting closer to Quebec in spirituality. If one refers to the three silos, then Canadian multiculturalism is, at worst, ambivalent and misleading, at best, highly hybrid. And from one meaning to the other, what you gain in breadth, you lose in consistency. That being said, this is my third point. As far as English Canada is concerned, and including Quebec, as far as English Canada is concerned, the system seems to be working rather well, no matter what. So why to fix it? <coughs> if I have a couple of minutes, I would say something about Europe. <coughs> uh, I think that over the last decades, a number of countries out there have embraced uh, um, uh, yes, they have embraced or showed an openness to the diversity paradigm. But a clear overall trend can be seen now towards the duality paradigm. So we're not only witnessing a backlash from multiculturalism, it's much more than that. Uh, the new trend is a departure from the diversity paradigm, and it is driven by the sense of a threat, by the feeling that Western values and cultures are not readily compatible with the traditions brought in by immigrants, especially the Muslims. Obviously, this shift speaks to the failure of most European countries to fully integrate immigrants and minorities. This is a failure. That explains the growing popularity of interculturalism nowadays, a model that is now officially promoted by the European Commission and the Council of Europe with its 47 members. Unanimously, those 47 members, including France, had uh, given their agreement that the Council of Europe should promote interculturalism as an in-between uh, formula between assimilation and what they call uh, communitarism, mosaic, uh, fragmentation, and so forth. Uh, all those synonyms, not to say multiculturalism. <laughs> now, we all know that some European countries are not that thrilled with diversity, but the shift that I'm referring to does not mean that the future of pluralism in Europe is compromised. The European Commission and the Council of Europe are strongly committed to the promotion of human rights and pluralism. So in my view, that means that Europe is trying to push pluralism and to approach the issue of diversity from a different angle, through different strategies, roughly the kind that I envision and advocate for Quebec, that is to acknowledge the fact of the duality and manage to orchestrate and to reduce it over the long run. In other words, suddenly, at the Western scale, there might be a large future for interculturalism. Why multiculturalism finds itself on the defensive? But let's see how those trends will play out. Thank you very much.